I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? That was the first question that Trump was asked by Rachel Scott of ABC News at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in Chicago. And as you probably could have guessed, he was not very happy with that question. And that question right there set the tone for the entire interview. But without further ado, let's watch his salty ass response. Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner. First question. <laughs> You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. Jesus Christ, my mouth was on the floor watching that. Just to remind you, she asked him why black voters should trust him due to his history of racist comments, and he spent most of the time complaining about how unfairly he's being treated. Just so embarrassing. But he does have a black friend, Tim Scott. Maybe you've heard of him, Senator. Oh, and also he's the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln. Does he honestly believe that this is going to resonate with them? Does he honestly think that's compelling to anyone? Like, he often says really bombastic, hyperbolic things. But has he ever thought for a second, hmm, maybe people think that I'm exaggerating a little bit. I genuinely don't know. But this goes to show you the hubris of this guy. They give him the opportunity to speak, which was controversial, as Rachel Scott pointed out in the beginning, because many of them didn't want him there. But rather than trying to win them over... He whines about how mean they're being to him. Now, this is an interview with journalists, and yet he acts like he's doing them a favor by showing up. It's just so unbelievable. But as I mentioned earlier, that exchange set the tone for the entire interview because Donald Trump went out of his way to take pot shots at Rachel Scott at every chance that he got. Now, he even blamed her for audio issues that he was experiencing. And I just want to show you a couple of examples uh, and listen to the way that the crowd and Harris Faulkner of Fox News reacts to his behavior. First of all, uh, it's very hard to hear you for whatever reason because of the fact that they have bad equipment because I guess, you know, this woman was unable to get the right equipment. But it's very hard for me to hear you, but I can hear every other word. Uh, it's very difficult, actually. But so I don't know if they can fix it or do something with it, but I'll do the best I can with it. Yeah. And I, I, two I'm days sorry. after I, that? I cannot understand. Your microphone is I know. Is so it is muffled. really hard for I, me I mean, to understand it's just, you, too. I can understand you perfectly. Because she's closer. I can understand um, you. I'm happy to hear that, sir. But I can't really understand. Uh, this, was, this is an attack on a political opponent. I have another one. 
where sir, I have a hostile mind, judge. To, we have you for a limited time, uh, sir. I'd love to move on to different no, topics. No, excuse me. You're can. the one that held me up for 35 minutes, just so you understand. But here's the question. Would you consider stepping down if you felt that your health was declining? Or would oh, you, absolutely. And who would make, I think I'd know. How would you make that decision? I think I'd know. Look, if I came onto a stage like this and I got treated so rudely as this woman treated me. Oh, my goodness. Me, and I'm fine with it because she, it does it. She was very rude, sir. Very rude. That was a nasty, that wasn't a question. She sir, didn't ask me a question. question. She gave a statement. That wasn't a question. I, I repeated your statement, the question. sir, actually. That is such a bad fucking look. Holy shit. When a Fox News host is shocked by your behavior, you've gone too far. And this kind of puts into perspective why media doesn't do more hard-hitting interviews with Donald Trump because... This is how he responds. They'll lose access to him. He'll have a meltdown and shit his pants on stage. So, you know, they they just try to be as polite as possible and use kid gloves on him when you shouldn't do that. This is somebody who wants to be president. You have to ask tough questions. And if he can't take it, then he can't take it. But to her credit, Rachel Scott didn't back down in the face of these attacks from him. And she continued to ask him really tough questions. And more importantly, she fact checked him and tried to hold him accountable when he told these outrageous lies that he typically does. Now, we're going to put aside his petulant behavior for a moment and focus on the substance, because that's where things really got worse for him. And I say this because he was asked about the DEI attacks on Kamala Harris by Republicans. And guess what he does? He basically legitimizes them, not full throatedly, but he essentially endorses them. And then he begins to question whether or not Kamala Harris is actually black. I'm not making this shit up. Some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define diversity, it? equity, inclusion? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me, is that that give, is literally give me a definition the words then. Would you give me a definition DEI. of that? Give me a definition. Sir, of that. I'm asking you a question. No, no, a you very have to define question. it. Define the define it for me if you. I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So. Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much, and she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She has always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she I think she somebody is a should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really have don't said? Know. I mean, I really don't know. Could be. I cannot believe he actually said that shit. Just to recap. The very first question was about why black voters should trust him, and then he goes on to call into question his opponent's blackness. This is devastating on so many levels, even by Trump standards. I mean, the independent suburban voters that he's trying to win over, they are turned off by that sort of overt racism. And furthermore, his attitude and behavior is reminding people why they didn't give him a second term in the first place. This is classic Trump who's arguing and combative with journalists and he's just making a fucking fool of himself. And a lot of people are yearning to get back to a more normal time before Trump in politics because that type of shit turns off people. They're annoyed by it, right? They just want somebody who's going to get in office and fight for them. So he is reminding a lot of people why they're so turned off by him in the first place. But they spend a good amount of time in that interview talking about J.D. Vance and why he picked him. And, you know, this isn't really interesting. He kind of holds his cards close to his chest and just talks about J.D. Vance's upbringing, upbringing and background and whatnot. Not interesting. But there's a specific moment that I want to highlight where he's asked by Katia Goba of Semaphore about the GOP's obsession with people's private lives. And he then pivots to his weakest issue, which is abortion. This is what Biden did during the debate. You know, it was his strongest issue. He was talking about abortion, but then he pivoted to immigration. Trump did the same thing. Now, 
this was refreshing to watch because after he got into the territory that he should be trying to avoid, he started to brazenly lie. But guess what? They don't let him get away with it and they cut him off. Well, they don't cut him off, but they try to cut him off and they interrupt him and they fact check him when he tells outrageous lies. Let's watch. He, you know, has a lot of opinions about childless women like myself or divorced people like yourself. Do you think, well, I mean, but, my point is here. But at least it was said in a friendly manner. My point is, <laughs> um, do you think the party, the Republican Party is getting a little bit too judgy about people's lives when you think about abortion or when you think about what J.D. Vance is saying? I, I don't think, look, I think that uh, the Democrat Party is really the one that has the problem. I think they're radical on abortion because they are allowing abortion in the ninth month. They're allowing the death. But I think it's they're allowing freedom, the right? death of a baby that's, after the baby is born, based on sir, the that's, that's governor of Virginia. Based on the governor of Virginia, they're allowing the death of the baby after it's born. It's they're allowing crime. abortions in the eighth and ninth month. Well, Democrats pregnancy. have denied. I think they're right, that, and and I think the, the Republican Party is actually much lesser. I think I've made them much less radical, perhaps. But the Republican Party, what we're doing is bringing it back to the states where everybody wanted it. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservative, everybody wanted abortion brought back. They didn't want Roe v. Wade in the federal government. They wanted it. Everybody wanted it But the majority of back. Americans oppose Excuse Roe v. Wade being overturned. They, they don't know about this. Sir. Right now, they're voting. Listen, I don't know why Jake Tapper couldn't have done that same thing during the debate. No Democrats support executing babies. That's literally illegal in every single state, as they pointed out. It should be the bare minimum that journalists say, that's not true, sir. That's factually incorrect. Now, I wish they also would have fact-checked him on his open borders claim and the claim that other countries are importing people from their insane asylums because that's just batshit insane. You said that during this interview. But it is the job of journalists to hold politicians accountable. So, Seeing them fact check him there was so refreshing, although it's part of the reason why he was so fucking pissy. You know, he really wanted to lie and they just wouldn't let him. Now, Rachel Scott also challenged this notion that he's pro law and order, given the comments that he's made about January 6th insurrectionists. You know, he said that he would pardon them. Now, there's one moment where he said something so stupid that the audience literally laughed at him. And just look at his face. You can tell he was uncomfortable. You have to ask, would you pardon What's those gonna people? happen? Oh, absolutely, I would. You if would they're pardon innocent, those? If they're innocent, I would pardon them. They've been convicted. And by the way, the Supreme Court just under, <laughs> well, they were convicted by a very, a very tough system. They were, how come the people that tried to burn down Minneapolis, how come the people that took over a large percentage of Seattle how come nothing happened to them? How come the but people that... But, sir, we're that, talking about people that were people, seen no, no, beating no. officers we're talking with about flag federal poles, dragging them down the stairs. They're on they video. Tried, Have you seen that really? video, sir? Oh, really? Well, they you shot. Would pardon those, you would pardon those rioters? Yeah. Needless to say, I think that he was actually feeling the heat, which is nice to see because I think that Donald Trump, despite him complaining endlessly about journalists being biased, you know, they've let him get away with saying the most outrageous shit. They use kid gloves because they don't want to be accused of being biased. But I mean, you can't treat him differently because he's going to complain. He's a politician and you should treat him as you would any other politician. So, you know, when he's actually on his toes, you see he fucks up. He ends up putting his foot in his mouth and ends up saying dumb, racist shit. Now, he was also asked about his pro-police position with regard to Sonia Massey. For those who don't know, this is an unarmed black woman who was murdered inside of her own home by a police officer. Now, he was asked why cops should get qualified immunity, and he didn't really give a coherent answer. He basically said that they should be given immunity because they're not purposefully doing bad things, but sometimes they make a bad decision in a split second. But the problem is that he didn't really address the issue that she was talking about with regard to Sonia Massey, and he just kind of talked around that. And he tried to defend his pro-qualified immunity position, but he couldn't do that in a way that was compelling, right? So expectedly, his answer was not satisfactory there. And I don't want to play the clip for you because it was just overly long and he doesn't really say anything substantive, but he didn't even try to placate them. He just sort of rambled, which, I mean, you'd think he'd at least try to prepare to answer this question if he's going to get it asked, which you, you should assume that you're going to be asked this question, but he very clearly did not, you know? Now, um... 
One last quick clip that I do want to play for you, which I found uh, very funny, was him bringing up this notoriously stupid black jobs talking point in order to make a xenophobic point. Now, the reason why I want to play this for you specifically is because I want you to see the audience's reaction, or rather, I want you to hear the reaction from the audience. A lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you that coming, coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You had the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is. Anybody that has a job. All right. Now, just to put things into perspective, he's trying to convince black journalists that immigrants are illegally entering the country and taking their jobs in journalism. Really? Do we have a lot of data showing that journalists are being replaced by undocumented immigrants? Is that really the argument that you're trying to make? It's incredibly idiotic. But I mean, he's a one-trick pony. He's got nothing else. He wants you to think that immigrants are bad and they pose a threat to everyone's livelihoods. So they're even coming into the country and they're taking prestigious journalist jobs. Cool. Cool. You're definitely saying that because it's true. You know, I'm, sh I'm sure very smart people are going to believe that. But I mean, everybody knows that's that's a lie, right? They're taking manual labor jobs and jobs at companies who exploit their status as undocumented immigrants because they want to abuse them. But he wants everyone to think that immigrants are a threat to all of our livelihoods and our very existence in this country because he's a fascist and trying to rally people against one particular group is what fascists do. But I mean, that's how we got to the whole black jobs line that he's super proud of for some dumb reason, right? But listen, just stepping back and reflecting on this 30-ish minute long interview, I've gotta say, even by Trump standards, this was a fucking disaster. It would be devastating for any other politician, possibly career ending if this happened 10 to 15 years ago. But since Donald Trump has lowered the bar so much, it's not necessarily that surprising, but still shocking to see how humiliating this interview was for him. But I mean, even by our new low standards that Donald Trump set for us, it was still really bad, right? Whether or not this hurts him, that's a different story. But this was by far and away one of the most embarrassing interviews I've ever seen him do. It might be one of the worst. Now, if Trump has the capacity to feel shame, I think that he would come away feeling utterly humiliated and maybe reflect and try to come up with better answers to the questions that he didn't answer on the spot. But I don't think that he's capable of self-reflection and probably thinks that Rachel Scott is the one who should feel embarrassed when she should feel like a badass because she asked very good questions and she held him to account. That's what journalists are supposed to do. But listen, I'm just going to say this. I'll, I'll close with this. He's not beating the weird accusations with an appearance like this because I don't know what the fuck that was, but it was not a good look for Donald Trump. I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the come zone. Come. Come.